But scientists seem to have found out an awful lot about the world already. Are there any more discoveries to be made? Isn't science more or less all done? The total opposite of that. Science, every experiment I do, every result I get, I get three more questions at least from that experiment. Uh, I think there are many, many things that still need to be done. No, I don't think science is finished at all. There are lots of things uh, which we uh, don't know. And it's this mystery that always goes on, and you think you've got it all sorted, and then you ask a question. Maybe you, you regret having asked it because you thought it was all finished, and then, oh no. In my field in particular, we still have very little idea of how these proteins that exist within membranes actually work. And this isn't just important from a biological point of view. These proteins that exist within the membrane, uh, they are the targets for many, many drugs. Uh, and so because we don't know how they work and what they actually look like, our ability to, des to design specific drugs to act through these molecules is very, very limited. I think there's so many things that still need to be looked at. And I think the biggest challenge, particularly for this generation, is that, is that of energy generation. Energy, I think, is going to be one of the key areas where we're going to see a lot of development. In biology, uh, you could say on the one hand we have been fantastically successful and we know an awful lot, but on the other hand we really don't understand how the brain works actually. I mean, how, you know, I want to pick up a glass. How, how on earth does my hand just do that? What is the brain doing? I mean, even a simple little creature like a nematode worm, a millimeter long, when it swims and it wiggles, the, 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 the wiring of those electric nervous circuits is not at all well understood, I understand. Science is not dead. It's only beginning. <laughs> right, I think we're only touching the surface. We're just scratching, not even the surface, we're scratching through the dust on top of the surface. I mean, there are layers of complexity and organisation in cells that we really don't understand. We I have to choose the most exciting or the most promising question and follow that up. There's lots of questions that are unanswered that I just haven't got the resources to follow up with. And then every time you think you even at least know the molecules that are in there, suddenly out of the blue a whole new piece of biology gets discovered. I mean, in the last 10 years or so we suddenly discovered a thing called small interfering RNAs. When I say we, I mean a lot of other people, not me, that nobody had expected were there and suddenly they're everywhere and there's a, there was a whole layer of cell regulation that somehow we had just not noticed for 20 or 30 years. I, I mean it, it just strikes as extraordinary there'll be another one in the next 10 or 20 years. And I think we still you know there are still some profoundly important questions that we don't really understand the answer to at all about um, in terms particularly of our own uh, bodies. I mean, I, I'm sort of obsessed with how things stay the same. Homeostasis is terribly, terribly important. I mean, if you think about your nose, that's my favorite example. You know, the nose neither grows nor shrinks. I mean, of course, sometimes, you know, you drink too much, it gets inflamed, I suppose. But on the whole, you know, it stays pretty much the same once you're a certain age. So that's pretty amazing, actually. I mean, <laughs> how does the nose know how big it's supposed to be, regardless of whether you've had a, just had an eaten an enormous meal or whether you're starving? I mean, it's, it's, it's truly remarkable. And to think that it's all sorted is, is completely naive, I think. And, and that's great, <laughs> because otherwise we'd be out of a job. So there's lots and lots left to do.